What's up, me hearties? This is Scrub Man here doing a review um, on the Ubisoft Skulls and Bones game. Um, so, those of you that have been watching my channel a little bit, I've posted uh, about four videos, I think, now of this game. Uh, just general gameplay. Um, I kind of wanted to play it a lot more just because there was a lot of questions about it, a lot of unknowns about it, um, a lot of controversy over this game on whether or not people think it's worth it or not so i kind of wanted to get a feel for it play it i did the open beta waited see, to see when the game came out um it got launched uh february 16th and then uh, i wanted to play a little bit before i give you guys an honest review so skulls and bones for those of you that don't know skulls and bones is an ubisoft original that is supposed to be pirating um, a lot of people were expecting it to be similar to Ubisoft's um, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, uh, which was pirate themed. Um, and it involved shipboarding, it involved uh, land combat, obviously with the Assassin's Creed stuff there was a lot of uh, land fighting as well. Uh, you could sail around seeing ships, board ships, etc, etc. had a really cool pirate theme to it. Uh, so I honestly did not really know about this game until last year. Um, last year, around, well, actually, December of 2022 is when I first heard about this game. Uh, I got a PlayStation gift card for Christmas. Heard about this game. I grew up around the ocean, so I loved the whole pirate thing. So I was like, heck yeah. I pre-ordered it. It was supposed to come out, I think, in February of 2023. And for those of you that don't know, everybody got refunded their money. There was no warning. There was no notice. There was nothing. I looked in my library one time to check up on the game, and it wasn't there no more. Uh, and in the store, it said that the release date was to be determined. I uh, did some research online, come to find out that had happened to everybody. Anybody that had pre-ordered the game, their money was refunded, and uh, the game was pushed back. Um, as I've gotten ready for this game, as it got its release date for February 16th of this year, I had learned that this game has actually been in development for, I've seen seven years and I've seen 10 years. So those of you that know that better, please let everybody know in the comments because I'm not really sure. But it's been in development for quite a while. So it's finally out. So let's get into it. Um, so I'm going to kind of start with some of the common questions that I've been getting for this game. Uh, one of which, is there crew boarding? Is there land combat? I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys right now, burst your bubble. No, there is not. So far, unless it's a future plan, there is absolutely no ship combat. There is no ship boarding. Um, I don't have too long. Uh, I got to go to work here soon, but I will show you guys a little bit of what happens when you quote shipboard uh, basically what happens is you will throw grappling hooks on the ship it will cut to a cut scene it will show them pulling the ship into you and then jumping on it and then that's it you loot the ship you get um, some bonus loot for doing so and that's it that is the extent of the crew boarding uh, as far as land combat there is zero which to me was kind of weird because as you can see my guy this costume he's wearing he has an axe you see some guys that have you know uh pistols in their belts and stuff like that and it's all looks there's there's no shooting um there is no any sort of real like player versus in play, uh, player versus environment combat on land or on the ships themselves. It is purely combat ship to ship. So that's the biggest con for a lot of people. I think a lot of people were expecting it to be like Black Flag and it wasn't as far as that. They cut that out. M myself, okay guys, you guys gotta take this from somebody who's only been waiting for this game for about a year and a half, right? I wasn't too, so far it hasn't really been a killer for me. I think now, well, at least during the open beta, it was, really wasn't a kill for me, just because I feel like with Assassin's Creed, it already needed the land combat, because it was Assassin's Creed. Though it was cool, I felt that with the Black Flag, it kind of got repetitive, because you'd board the ship, you'd do the exact same task, and then it was that was it. And I don't remember it giving you any bonus loot, aside from the fact that you could add the ship to your 
quote fleet and the whole fleet thing was mainly you just sent ships out on missions but you didn't actually go on those missions you just you know it was like a side thing you did but it didn't i mean there really wasn't any purpose besides just you know gave you another way to attack the ships it was cool don't get me wrong but i feel like what ubisoft was trying to do and again, you know, you guys know games, they don't really focus on the players too much anymore. They were trying to focus more on the whole, I think their thought was pirates on ships shooting cannons at each other. So they decided to focus on that. The only issue I will say with that thought process is they didn't give us anything to replace it. So um, I'm going to kind of show you guys, um, let me see the best way to show you guys kind of what started out. So the open beta... When they released, you started out with the basics of the game. You were allowed to go so far in the quest line, and you were allowed to go through so much of what's called infamy. It's basically uh, your leveling. Um, so we'll get into that. As far as ships, uh, during the open beta, you had these ships to start with um, that you had to level up through the infamy ranks to get. So certain ships, certain weapons require you to be a certain infamy rank before you can unlock the blueprint. You have to go hunt the blueprint down, get it, and then you have to craft it. That's another thing a lot of people have not liked about this game is there is a lot of crafting. Okay, there's a lot of gathering resources to craft, I think, just about everything in this game. I think unless you get it from a quest which is hit and miss, you don't really know what the rewards are too much. It'll give you little pictures, but it doesn't say specifically what it is. The fastest way to get the loadout that you want, particularly for your ship, is to get the blueprints and then craft them. So it's a lot of crafting. Um, as you can see, each ship um, requires you to have so much stuff. Um, you can track these blueprints, um, you can track them, and then you can go to your map. And it like will tell you, like you can see here, where you can get said materials. So this is the map. This is what you started with with the open beta. You'll end up coming here is the first place you'll go. And you're pretty much allowed to just free roam everywhere. Um, it goes to the coast of Africa and the East Indies. And this is where, this is the map. Um... Now, during the open beta, a lot of us were thinking that this was what we were going to get for the open beta. And then I was hoping, <laughs> because once you've explored everything, it's kind of like, um, okay, that when the game came out, February 16th, this map would just be huge and open. And we'd be like, oh, wow, look at all this stuff to do. As you can see, that has not changed. This is the map. Now... However, I do believe they are going to expand it. From what I have seen, it seems like what they're going to be doing is a seasonal thing. So each season, um, I think what they're going to do, my guess, guys, this is a guess, is they're going to add like a new territory or um, a new zone and expand the map. And then there'll be like, uh, from what I've seen, there'll be bosses, big world bosses that you can attack during those seasons right and the reason i think that is because like this right here it clearly goes somewhere else it just hasn't been added which i think this was a really bad thing on ubisoft's um side just because why 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 they would do this and not add it, it's almost like they gave us a demo for a full game and as you guys have probably seen ubisoft ceo is still maintaining that this is a quadruple a game that is worth 70 dollars I go back and forth on that one just because they really they they didn't deliver on what players wanted number one they didn't give us anything to replace it and even after the open beta when the full game came out it was literally the exact same stuff as the open beta the only difference is it actually lets you go through all the ranks and whatnot because so infamy so we'll get into that real quick while we're on that so when you start you're going to start as an outcast. You were allowed to go up to Brigid in the um, open beta. From there, once the game... So you could only get ships and weapons that were for this level. Everything that was cut, uh, Marauder, Corsair, Cutthroat, and Kingpin, um, you had to wait until the game expansion a week later. Or if you got the premium edition, you got to play three days early, and that stuff was all there for you. 
so then once you level up, you could go and find those blueprints for said um, infamy ranks and then continue on. As well as the quests as well, guys. The story quests, you could go through the rest of the quest. So, you know, okay, cool. That was really the only thing that really changed is it opened up that. The infamy system is really weird. So when you get to Kingpin 1, all of the stuff that you can unlock right now is Kingpin 1. But this thing goes on and on and on. My buddy and I went, just held down the uh, button and we let this go. And so far, it's gone up to Kingpin 1300 and counting. What is the point of that? I have no idea. My guess is, is that as this game, hopefully when they um, you know, send DLCs out or expansions or whatever they're planning on doing, is my guess is that some things will require you to be certain higher Kingpin levels. Because right now there is absolutely no point of this. Um, I'm Kingpin 4 and it hasn't done, it doesn't do anything. Um, so yeah, that is the, that's how they do the leveling system. Uh, you do have a cargo for each of your ships. You also have a warehouse so you can transfer things uh, from your ship to your uh, warehouse. Now if you guys look down in the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see my ship. And you're going to see an orange box and then a little filling line. Each ship has a cargo maximum. Um, when you actually reach the maximum, your ship barely moves. And I do mean barely moves. So you have to watch your cargo. You got to, you know, put things into your warehouse from your ship to make sure that it's not too heavy. You sell stuff, whatever, and, you know, make money and whatnot. Um, now, going back to the crafting thing, I, though a lot of people didn't like that, it kind of made sense to me because that was the whole point of being a pirate. They stole resources. They stole money. They, 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 that was the whole purpose. Now, the crafting part itself, okay, yeah, but, I mean, it would have been dumb if they would have had us, you know, going out and looting all this stuff but then not having a reason to need it. So it kind of makes you do the whole pirate idea of, looting and plundering um that's my own personal opinion uh but not everybody agrees which is totally fine now one thing i will say that they kept that is similar to black flag is attacking forts you can attack forts um you can attack legendary ships uh there are these little settlements and outposts which they're like the forts attacking the forts but easier um you can do them solo you can do them co-op they're really not that hard especially when you get a couple of the higher up ships even in the open beta i was going over and pretty much doing these solo um so yeah that was you know another thing that they added that was similar to black flag so far that is probably the closest thing to black flag that i have seen is the whole attacking forts and stuff um the only thing, and I will get into this later, is how they do attacking said forts and legendary ships. If you guys have not seen my earlier videos, you won't know. For those of you that have seen it, you already know where I'm going with this. Uh, let's just say they make it almost near impossible to do so. So far, I haven't seen anybody be able to do it solo or even with a buddy. Um, that was kind of another uh, con of this game, is it almost forces you to play with other people. Um, in the sense of like, so you guys can co, you can get in a group of up to three. A lot of these legendary ships or these events like this right here, it says co-op, right? And shows three people. Most of these I have noticed take way more than three people. The reason why is they give the legendary ships or the elite captains a crap ton of HP and you get a time limit. Usually it's about 15 to 17 minutes. So when this, this is actually one of the elite captains that I have posted. So if you guys haven't watched this video, you can watch it and you'll see. Um, you get a time limit and it, that time limit starts if you get anywhere near this guy. Which is kind of dumb. I don't want the timer to start until I've actually engaged him. But whatever. You go and you are just laying into this dude. At one point, my later video that I just posted, it took seven of us to get him. And it, that was within the time frame. 
uh, we barely made the time frame, I may add. And it was funny because you got seven guys, seven players who are all higher than this guy. And we are barely like slowly putting dents into him. That is absolutely ridiculous. I do not know why they they made it so hard. It's like they wanted to stack all of the odds against you and force you to basically group up into an elite force, which in this game is really by luck. You either um, you either, you know, plan it with a bunch of friends and have multiple groups or you can see that call for help button in the bottom uh, right hand corner. You can call for help and it's basically up to other players discretion on whether or not they want to come and help you. So, you know, the first attempt I did at this, it was me and my buddy and we didn't even get him. I don't even think halfway down in health in that 15 minutes. So, you know, that was kind of um, a con for me personally, because uh, although I like playing with other people or playing with friends, it's nice when you can just do it solo and you don't have to stress like if your friends or other players don't want to help or aren't available, I can just go in and do it myself. And I have a little bit of a challenge. You know, that's fine. No, you can't. You, you won't get anywhere near. I think if you could kill him by yourself, I would guess you would have to be pretty high up in ship level and pretty high up just i mean you would have to be just your weapons and everything would have to be way higher than him and even then i think they have designed it to where you still can't do that because seven players all higher than him attacking him didn't seem to make any difference at all so going into the ships so i showed you guys the ships um your weapons so the blacksmith is where you'll do your weapons again so you can buy blueprints from these guys. Um, you can also buy them from other NPCs around the world. Uh, if you don't have them, you can track them. And it will tell you where to go. And if you already have that location discovered, you can fast travel there for a little bit of silver. Fast traveling in this game costs silver, like everything else. The further away it is, the more it costs. Again, another thing that you have to really plan. Um, I just noticed this, apparently the prices update. So that's odd. I didn't even notice that. Um, but you buy the blueprints. And then you gotta um, go and build them. Right? Now, one thing I will say about this is they did really give you a lot of choices as far as the different type of weapons. You got torpedoes, you got mortars, just like in Black Flag. I actually like the mortars better in this game than I do in Black Flag because they do some crazy amount of damage. I actually am absolutely in love with the mortars. I mean, they even have rockets. I haven't tried them yet, but I'm going to. Uh, they even have big ballista things. And sea fire, you can literally breathe fire like a little dragon out at your enemies, which is kind of cool. Um, so, I mean, they give you some options with weapons and loadouts, so that was kind of cool. Um, different armors. But again, everything has to be crafted. You can uh, even craft your own ammo, so you don't have to buy it. Um, that was another thing, going back to the ship captains and stuff real quick, the legendary events. So somebody asked me um, at work, what happens if you don't get it done in the time frame? Well, you guys guessed it. You get absolutely nothing, and you just wasted 15 minutes of your life and your ammo trying to kill him. And he just goes back to full health and just keeps selling in a circle. And then you basically have to retry whenever. Uh, the Carpenter you is where you go. So you can loot shipwrecks and also harvest materials like trees and plants and whatnot. Um... Also, the hunting spear, you can get in a little uh, dinghy, or they call it a, 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 a dowel, and you can go and hunt the sharks and whatnot. You can also shoot the sharks with cannons, I may add. You don't necessarily have to get in this, in the little hunting boat that you start, on, start off in. I mean, but you can. It probably makes it a little bit easier. But you can upgrade them to be able to take on uh, bigger animals, but also... Uh, harvest things that are more elite i haven't really noticed yeah okay i'm about to say so with the saw for the tree and the sickle for the plant it gives you better yield 
when you have a higher thing. Um, the crowbar is used for the shipwrecks. Um, as you explore the world, some shipwrecks require you to have a higher level crowbar. So that's where this comes in. The spyglass allows you to see further, obviously. Uh, you will also go to ham. Another feature of the ships is you can put on furniture. The furniture basically gives you perks. So this one increases your damage from ramming. Again, like everything else, you got to find the blueprint. Once you unlock it, getting to the right infamy rank. And then you got to go hunt the blueprint down, buy it, and then hunt down all of the uh, crafting supplies and silver to build it. I am but one person. So, you can also craft uh, the repair kits. So, the one thing too I will add is your character is very dull. Uh, there really isn't a lot of interaction between the um, like NPCs and you. Your guy, I don't think I've heard him talk one time. My guy, he has not talked one time. Um, so your guy is really, really dull. Um, very dull. There's really no personality to these guys. Um, so I'm going to get into the character customization. So as far as character customization, you can do the emotes and the clothes. That's it. And it's got everything from, you know, you can buy whole sets. Or you can buy the individual items and mix match. Everything from hats, jewelry. Um, it does not affect gameplay at all. It does not affect um, your guy's rating or anything like that. It is purely cosmetic. So, uh, some of them you will get from rewards, and some of them you will have to buy with silver or pieces of eight. You can also do tattoos. Any emotes, pretty self explanatory. That's about as much personality as you get out of your characters is the emotes. So that's pretty much it for as far as character cosmetic. Um, you can change his appearance or her. Okay, There is a male and female choice in this game. For those of you that were wondering that, you can choose uh, the gender. It's not male strict or female strict. The only character in this game that really seems to have a much uh, to have any sort of personality, at least on your ship, is the one. This one chick, she'll talk to you as you sail around. She's actually over here sitting down. She's also the only character on your ship that is given a name. So there just really isn't a lot of NPC or character personality at all. So when we sail, what happens then? So from here, you can move your cargo back and forth between your warehouse and your ship. Uh, you can also manage your ship. This is where you can name it, and you can change the cosmetics. Uh, the cosmetics, again, is just like the um, character. You can do a whole set, or you can do individual. Now these, uh, once you get them, they go in. They don't take up any space on your ship. They don't, um, they don't affect any of the gameplay. Purely cosmetic. Uh, no blueprints required. Um, this is purely just for fun. And you can do the wheel. You can put a little sign on the back. Uh, this is a... Oh, wait. That's not it. Uh, this ornament thing is like the sides. You can add spikes. Um, your helm. Just basically your compass. You can also do the look at your crew. Okay, you have a pet that will sit up on your ship with you. So, um, you don't get a lot of choices on that right now. Um, put little ornaments. Same thing here, except it's up top. You can put the spikes and whatnot. The really cool thing is this flag thing. So, this is the one I have. So, when you complete an event... Oh, that's pretty dope. That's new. Oh, you had to buy it from the store, that's why. Oh, of course you do. And you can celebrate when you guys have done something super hard. Apparently what that is. Um, this is where you'll also, when you craft your stuff, this is where you'll put it on. 
So down here in the right hand corner, you guys are going to see six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that is your ship rank. So when you go out and you fight, you're going to see a level on ships, and it's going to be like um, it'll be anywhere from one. So far, I've seen up to thirteen, and if it's too high for you, it'll be in red. You do have little safe zones, like over here you guys will see these little uh, buoy, uh, buoys. Uh, when you're in these zones, you cannot fire your weapons. I can't fire. Okay, and you can't be damaged. So if you're getting your butt whooped, you can sail into here and you can't be touched. Now, as far as outposts, which are these things, that does not work. It won't let you dock or anything while in combat. So here's an example of one of the little forts you can raid, or this is a settlement. It'll have a line, you have to stay within these boundaries, and they will jump on, uh, your crew will jump in, and actually, you know what, I might be able to do this one real quick. I'm running out of time, guys. I ha do have to go to work, but I wanted to get this done. I will show you guys the extent of crude boarding and plunder, like land combat. It's the same thing, we'll do a little somatic. So you'll hit plunder. You'll show them all jumping off, and that's, that's it. And then you will have to destroy all of the defenses, or all of the enemies, whether it's ships, or there's also towers that will shoot at you. So, oh cool, perfect. Crew boarding, so see if I can get them. Ah, crap. So the crew boarding thing runs out eventually. You have to uh, get them in a certain amount of time. So what you're doing is you're waiting for those chest things to fill up. They basically bring you chests into the little boat and that's the extent of it. So if I can get closer to them. Oh. If you do happen to go outside, it gives you 60 seconds to get back in the zone. <clears throat> the sailing in this game can be really challenging. It's kind of weird because you, especially some of these forts there, um, or settlements even too, they're like along these river paths. So you don't have a lot of room to turn. So what happens is, is you'll hit the land like this now you gotta turn and everything while they're just shooting at you and windling your health down because you have no room to move so that's where you have to literally learn how to like work your speed and your angles that was horrible shots don't judge me y'all so you can see his little level two thing that's how you know ship break and it's based off what armor what weapons what ship you have um the ships start at a um at a certain rank so this is one of the top three this is the one before the highest you can get the forts are all the military forts are all level 10 as are the capital cities um they are pretty challenging to do uh, especially at a lower rank Each ship also has a, like, uh, signature ability or, like, uh, a type of damage. So, like, this ship, it gets, it gives extra damage by ramming. Some ships give extra damage by using uh, incendiary devices or fire devices. Um, there is a healing ship, so they do the whole uh, tank, DPS, and healer. There is one healer ship, there are cannons and, and mortars and stuff that heal your allies instead of hurting. Um, so if you need a healer on like really hard forts or like the bosses, you can have somebody whose loadout is made to heal you guys, which I thought was kind of cool because that's helpful when things don't go according to plan. Uh, again, your ship then is completely based off healing and not based on fighting. So you guys kind of have to plan how you're gonna do things, you know? Oh, do it! Oh, I missed him. No. 
The crew boarding is really weird because you have to literally, you have to grapple those guys just right and it pulls it tight. If you are going too fast, it rips it. So you have to make sure you're going slow when you're passing them in order to get it to stick, which is really, really weird. But it's not like you just hit triangle and he just does it. So like Black Flag did, it would just initiate it right away. So after you get it, it'll show this. And that's it, guys. Like I said, some of them will have towers. Um, you can mark them with your spyglass. So they'll show up for later so you know what to expect. So here you go. Right here. So when I go, if I was to go to the settlement, I know that they got two forts plus the ships I'm going to have to be fighting. Uh, again, they have ranks just like the ships. So this is a level 10. Um... These also are another way for you to get resources. So like you guys saw those tools I was showing you guys, like the saw and stuff. You can come here. This is a type of rock. This is your shipwreck. And you can get them just by, you know, sailing right up next to them and harvesting them. Or you can go to these settlements and pl either plunder it or you can actually buy uh, with silver these like let's say like this i'm too high for or i'm too low to take it on and plunder it i can just sail over to it and interact with it and buy the stuff from them instead of um plundering it the only crappy thing is they only usually have like the rosalie cloth i was too low in in order to plunder this location and i needed the rosalie cloth and this was the closest place to get it they only keep three on them at a time. When you buy them, you have to wait for it to restock, which is kind of crappy. Um, and that time limit seems to differ depending on the location. Um, kind of getting into closing, guys. The only really cool thing that I've really liked about this game is this whole smuggling thing, which is called the Helm. I really, really, really like this thing. Um, what it is, is basically you start your own criminal smuggling empire. Uh, you start off by smuggling rum and um, opium. And you basically, you buy sugarcane for the rum and poppy seeds for the, or poppy for the um, opium. And then you go to your you go back to one of these capital cities or one of these dens is what they're called so you got st anne's and then there's another one up here that's another den this is where you crap so you'll do the white rum the white skull rum is here and then the opium is done up here later you will be able to do it's gin and um oh black tobacco or black snuff is what it's called you'll be able to eventually unlock those. Um, I've gotten pretty far in the smuggling thing and I still haven't unlocked that. So what happens is, and I wonder if I can, if I have any in my ship. Yeah, so you'll get like, this is a raw material. So you'll get this, these berries. This is for the gin that I haven't unlocked yet. It's weird because you get the stuff for the gin, even though you can't make it yet. So it's really weird. The good news is, is by the time you unlock it, you'll have a crap load of stuff ready to go. So, I mean, I guess it depends on how you look at it. So basically, you'll go to what, what's called your office. Okay, this is your criminal empire little den thing. This is the same for both the other den I showed you guys with the opium and this one the only difference is what you're making so you'll provide material so say oh you're allowed to make white skull rum right now okay this will be what you first start off with is this sugarcane so you got to have sugarcane you'll get that by uh you can either buy it or you can get it from rogue ships you'll give it to them you can toggle the max and you give it to them and they make it it takes so much time for them to make it when it's done there will be a little yellow circle on this distillery thing you'll go in and you'll uh, go down to finished product and you'll pick it up all right once you've picked it up you can go to your order registry 
<clears throat> and you can do deliveries. So this requires me to have 66 of the Blue Lotus Opium. And you guys see that 88 and that little coin thing. So there is another kind of currency in this game called Pieces of Eight. Okay. Um, one thing, another con about this game that I didn't like is when you get up to like the last ship. Like I said, I have the ship before the highest. So when you get ready and high enough to get the highest ship and the best tier of the weapons, guess what? You can't buy them with silver. I mean the blueprints. You can't buy the blueprints with the silver. Do you know why? Because, well, you have to buy them with pieces of eight. Which are these, you know, 88, 68. You guys can see the top left hand corner. I or top right hand corner. I have 936. Well, guess what, guys? Again, like we said, they stack the odds against you. You have to have thousands, and I mean thousands of these pieces of eight to buy the best ship that's available right now and all of the higher tier armors and weapons yeah and then then you, you have to buy the blueprint but guess what then you have to go hunt down all of the crafting materials and i'm guessing probably silver to build them i was really really pissed when i found that out i was working and working and working to stock up on my, on crafting materials and everything and silver getting ready to buy the highest stuff when i got the kingpin i got the kingpin and was like well what the heck i can't buy this stuff finally found out that you have to you start your smuggling uh agency and you have to use the pieces of eight which you have to grind these out in order to get those things what the hell, right? And I believe the highest ship costs 5,000 pieces of eight. 5,000, guys. Um, the weapons and armor, they range from about 1,200, 1,300, all the way up to like in the 2,000s. Each. Okay, that's each. Each blueprint's like 1,000 or 2,000 of these things. Okay. Um, so you do these orders, right? 92, that's your reward. You get 92, 88. You can take all of these at once. Um, and then again, it takes a little while for you to get more. Go figure, right? So you have to just slowly grind this stuff out. Um, when you take these orders, guess what? You cannot fast travel. So this location here, Kakak Turapung, you have to sail there. You cannot fast travel at all. You can't fast travel anywhere when you have an order in your journal. When you're uh, sailing to these locations, you are going to be attacked by a crap load of these uh, ships. Like it says here, a small fleet of Gannets, sharp-eyed shooters will be on your tail. Okay, it is not a small fleet. They are everywhere. And they each, they, depending on what kind, what kind of them are coming after you, they could have torpedoes, they could have rockets, they could have the flaming fire. Um, my buddy and I, we took all of these orders one time and there were so many of these things that we, we were just annihilated. Okay, again, as long as you have one of these orders in your journal, you cannot fast travel anywhere. Okay, the only way you can get out of it is if you abandon the quest. If you abandon the quest and you took them all, guess what? You got to wait until more of them come. So that's one way to get pieces of eight. So after you've created your opium in your rum, that's what you'll do. You'll come over here to sell it basically is what you're doing. Now, what happens when you need more sugar cane or more poppy in order to make more materials? Well, you can come over here and you can go to these locations and buy it with silver or you can go to these uh, forts or uh, it's a group of the rogue ships that hunt you when you are doing an order and you can steal it from them you can sink them and plunder them and steal it and you get more obviously I have not tried the forts yet because I haven't gotten to the point where I can take them on without getting annihilated uh, and it even says that you should group with other players because you're probably going to get absolutely just destroyed because that's how they've designed the game so that's how you'll get your uh, poppy and your uh, sugarcane to keep making stuff now cool news is 
when you're doing the orders and you have all those ships coming after you, when you sink them, you get silver chests that give you like five to eight hundred silver. So you can get a lot of silver really quick. And they also carry the sugarcane, the opium, the blueberries for the gin and the tobacco for the black snuff that you'll you'll get those two later those will be loot when you sink those ships so you can stock up on those as you're delivering orders you can sink those ships okay a little bit at a time and get more stuff that way too um i would be careful about that because like i said they are everywhere and they follow you and before you know it you have like 80 of these things attacking you it's it can get kind of crazy now, I just got to this phase. You can build a criminal empire. Okay, there's also a leaderboard. Um, and apparently it's gotten bigger. Because this was not this in depth when I looked at it last night. So the way they base this is on how much pieces of eight you have. The more pieces of eight you have, the more stuff you get. And you go into these seasonal and, oops, seasonal and weekly leaderboards for what i understand the only purpose of this is if you make it to the top eight you get uh, a cosmetic set that you can basically show off that you made it i don't really care about that kind of stuff but whatever good news about this is you can take these forts uh, they call manufacturers and they generate pieces of eight for you so many per hour so right now it says 28 per hour and they fill up you go pick up your pieces of eight and that's another way you can get pieces of eight pretty quick. So that kind of helps. Uh, so far, it's still a grind, guys. Still a grind. It costs silver to get these things running. So you can see right now it says funded for an hour and 16 minutes. When that runs out, I have to pay more silver to get it to go again. I can also deliver 80 poppy to make them go faster. So again, it's all about like... You really have to think about your money and your supplies almost too much is my thing with this game. It's, it, there's way too much going on. I almost feel like I'm at work. Um, the biggest thing I want to touch on, the last other thing that I just thought about is what happens when you die. When you die, um, and my buddy and I didn't realize this until after a couple of days of playing this game, and we realized that he had lost so much crap because he had died and what happens is when you die there's a little shipwreck sailing like a little sail mass coming out of the wave symbol that will appear wherever you died at and it'll be whatever color you are so like um usually one of the players will be a blue icon like your ship will be blue on the map and then the, your friend will be like orange or purple so you can tell who's who and your markers will be the same color too as you so you go you can both put markers and you know whose marker is who right so you can work together so when you die let's say you're blue there'll be a blue mass looking symbol coming out of the water like it's wrecked there'll be a little icon that will come up on the map like let's say it's right here right there'll be a little ship mass icon i died here what we found out is when you die all your most of your cargo any special cargo you had treasure maps um, any rare stuff you had uh, crafting materials anything except like weapons and oh any food that will help your with your stamina it will all be right where you died and you have to go pick it up so if you died in a really bad spot full of enemies yeah it's a it's a hoot oh and guess what if you die trying to get that stuff it's gone forever so that's when you realize you might want to start like when you uh like if you're about to do a bunch of those orders and there's about to be a bunch of ships coming after you you might want to move anything that's important back into in, into your warehouse so that if you die you don't lose it all right um, the only other thing i do want to get on real quick guys because i gotta go to work is i want to show you guys the stamina this is another thing i didn't like about the sailing <clears throat> because it's one other thing you have to worry about remember ubisoft is stacking the odds against us when you go full sail you guys are going to notice a little green bar that just popped up underneath disembark and it runs down your crew gets tired 
So if you look at where it says the square and then it says 13, you can eat food to make them generate, regenerate the stamina faster. But it runs out and it runs out really quick. So far I have not noticed that to change. When it runs out, you go down to half sail. Oops, okay, or full stop, that works too. And it will regenerate. And then when it fills back up, you can do it again. All right? I do not like that. I thought it made everything just way more difficult. Um, just, again, another odd that's stacked against you. Another thing is you can brace. Just like in Black Flag, even though it doesn't show all the guys bracing like it did in Black Flag, which I thought was kind of cool. And then when you get dealt damage, the shield will break a little bit, and eventually if you get dealt too much damage, you won't be able to do it anymore. Now, guess what? like I said, odds stacked against you when you brace. It uses stamina, and look how fast it's going down. Holy crap, I did not realize that. So if you just used up all your stamina, going full speed trying to run away but guess what the enemy just shot a whole volley of rockets at you and you're about to die and crap you're trying to brace so you don't take as much damage well you can't because you are out of stamina when you use the repair kits too uh that's on the left uh side of the square it's your left arrow when you use those you have to wait a minute to use them again so you have to use them wisely so it, although I don't, I don't know. Here's my sum up of this game, guys. If you like a game that is purely ship combat and um, really challenges you in a lot of things, uh, but it focuses really more on looting things and plundering things to craft stuff for your ship and uh, is very... Uh, well, actually, it's, it's non-existent on the land combat it's purely ship to ship combat you might like this game right now with the my personal opinion on this game as of right now I do like it uh, like I said I do like the pirate stuff so it's not really a 100% a, a killer for me however I'm basing that opinion is is it completely on whether or not they add stuff to this game if the map stays the same size that it is right now and they don't add anything else this game is going to get boring really really quick um because I, I mean i'm almost to the uh, point where once i get enough pieces of eight to buy the biggest ship and the cannons and stuff that's it i mean there really isn't anything else you can do except i don't know try to get at the top of the leaderboards on your criminal empire that's about it right now so if you haven't bought this game, my advice to you, quite honestly, would be to wait. I, I honestly would wait because I honestly, I would feel bad and I feel like it would go against my best judgment to tell you guys to buy this game. Yeah, it's worth buying with the way it is right now. There's way too many questions, way too many unknowns, and I really did. I'm a huge Ubisoft fan. I love the Assassin's Creed games. I love the Far Cry games. I like the Ghost Recon games. And I'll be honest, there's a lot of things about this game where I really felt that for the first time, at least for me, they really, really under-delivered for us. So I would wait. I don't think this game is a 100% no, don't buy it. But I would caution you against doing so right now, especially with the fact that when the game was released, they didn't add anything new. You know, they didn't expand the map. They didn't add nothing. It was basically the exact same thing as the open beta. They just lifted all the level restrictions. So I would wait. I would wait, see what they do. See if they add seasons or DLCs and, and, you know, and give us a better playing experience. Then if you're like, heck yeah, I like what I see, then yeah, go ahead. I, I think it'd be worth playing at that point. Uh, I will continue to post more videos and gameplay on this stuff, guys, to, sh to give you guys a little bit more idea of, like, the plundering forts and stuff like that. I just wanted to do a kind, you know, little quick review with the time that I had before work so you guys could see what this game is like uh, and just cover some of the basics. If there's any part of this game or anything that I talked about in this video that you guys want to see me actually do a video on and, and talk about more, let me know in the comments and I will get that done. 
Thank you guys for watching. If you are not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Follow me for more content. If there's something you want to see, let me know. Give me a like if you guys enjoyed this video, liked what you heard, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, keep scrubbing.